Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique, and today we're going to start and hopefully finish constructing two backpack projects. This past December, I made my very first backpack and it was so much fun. It was the Range Backpack by Noodlehead. And my goal was a couple of things. One, to make a really, really fun gift for my sister. And two, was to sew with our Sobatique canvas and see how that canvas quilts, how it stitches up with zippers and with multiple layers and with interfacing and just a whole plethora of different things. And I really enjoyed sewing with it and I learned a lot. So what I decided to do is we, a while back, we gave sample canvas to Annie of By Annie Patterns. And she made, amongst these two backpacks here, several other projects with our canvas, just to help us understand how the canvas felt, how they liked it, how they liked to work with it. And um, it really was a, a blast. And I, and I know it will be fun for you as well. Um, so these are two of the samples that she sent us using our sample fabric, which was the sample canvas at that time. This is the Back At You 2.1. And this one is the Got, Got Your Back 2.0. They're very similar backpacks with straps, handles, zippers, zipper closure, front snap closure and compartments inside. Same with the larger one. This one has a little bit more compartments and then it also has some side holders to it. And probably for, a, this one would be more for a youth I think, or somebody that doesn't need a lot of storage space. I want to make one of these for myself to replace my um, very clunky and old fashioned uh, laptop bag. So <laughs> this will be actually a blast to make for myself. So what I did is I have a couple of goals with this project as well, and then we'll get started. My goal is again to work with our canvas and to work with all of the Biani products, the zippers, the soft and stable, mesh, fold over elastic where it's called for, and just really, and hardware, and then really get a feel for um, the canvas, how it works, so that I can give you some more details about the weight of the canvas and, um, and how it functions, and if we need to change anything, like our needle size, or thread or anything else to help reinforce the canvas and to help with the strength of our bags. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Again, I'm making both of these and I think what I'm going to do throughout this tutorial is I will be focusing exclusively on what we need to do to make the larger of these two backpacks. And let me give you some sizing so you understand the size. The gotcha back, is the bigger one here. This one measures 14 inches tall. So it really has a good height for a, a laptop or um, an iPad or something like that. It is 12 inches wide. And then the depth is about six inches. So you can really get a lot in this backpack. The smaller um, version of this, which is back at you, is Two, 12 inches high, so it's just a couple inches shorter, a little smaller. It is eight inches wide, so that's the significant difference between these two backpacks. And then it's also a depth of four inches, which would make sense. So, but each of them has adjustable straps, decorate them any which way you would like. So we're gonna work with some hardware, we're gonna work with some zippers, and I decided to go with the mesh inside the backpack instead of the coordinating fabric. So that'll be fun to work with the mesh as well. So 
Let's get started. I'm going to share with you the fabrics that I selected from our collection. For the larger, um, got your back. <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to remember each one of these separately. What I did is I selected fabrics from our blue collection. The main fabric is Medora Flora in the shade of Delft. This is our canvas. It's 57 inches wide. And I will tell you that I am calculating the differences between 45 inch wide fabric, which is what is part of the fabric requirements on the back of these patterns. Um, I want to make sure that you don't overbuy your canvas when you're working on any of these bags. So I will do a little conversion to sh and share with you exactly what is needed of 57 inch wide fabric because I mean, that's 12 inches extra and that will make a difference in how many yards you truly do need. So Medora Flora Delft will be the main fabric. My coordinating fabric, which will be for all of the binding for the straps and um, anything else that coordinates on the outside as well as the inside will be again, our canvas, 57 inch wide canvas. And this is the hand dyed Delft. So they're meant to work together. And then the lining of this backpack will be our 115 inch wide. I took this from our 115 inch wide batik cotton. So this is our traditional cotton. It has a much lighter weight than the canvas, but this will be the lining. Um, I kind of was thinking I would have liked to have used the canvas as the lining just to give it that extra durability. Um, but I went with the cotton and so I am using a combination of our fabrics, the canvas and the cotton. This is the project you're going to see throughout the tutorial because it has a few more um, features on this backpack than the smaller one. So either one, follow these steps and you'll be able to do both of these backpacks. The smaller backpack, <laughs> the um, back at you is the smaller one. I selected these really cute colors. I think it'll be great for spring. Will be the Garden East of Vine Lilac as the main fabric. And this is canvas again. So this is our 57 inch wide canvas. My lining will be cotton. And this is the Violetta in sachet pink. It's really a beautiful complement to the pink that's inside the Garden East Divine motif of this fabric. And then my coordinate, again, for all the straps and for the binding and for any of the added pockets and things inside the backpack will be canvas. And this is our hand dyed lilac. So these three will make up our back at you project. And um, so those two, now I, I think I probably shouldn't have done two bags at the same time, but I felt that they were so closely designed that I really wanted to get two backpacks out of this. And I think it will be um, very educational at the same time. So let's get started. And I'm gonna walk you through all of the different accessories that go into each one of these bags. And we will have all of these kits available on our website where you can select any fabric from our collections to make up the backpacks that you want to make for yourself as well. So let's get started on this bag. What I have in front of me, I have previously done some prep work, but I wanna take you through from beginning to where I am right now, just things to consider. I'd like to take you through each one of the components of this project. And again, I'm making the larger um, Got Your Back bag out of our blue collection here. And so the main fabric and the lining fabric are both a yard and a quarter. And the coordinate is a yard of fabric. So what I'm going to do, since I'm using our canvas for the main and the coordinate, is I'll include um, kind of a summary of what you really need from our canvas because it's 57 inches wide. These measurements are for 45 inch wide 
cotton. So um, just keep that in mind. So I'll definitely get a conversion for you. We need soft and stable, so we need a yarn of that when we do our quilting of the main fabric to the lining. We need mesh fabric, or you can use your coordinating cotton if you want to put um, cotton in your pockets instead of the mesh. I chose the mesh. And this is the um, parrot blue color. That actually is the color for all of my coordinates here for the zipper and the mesh is parrot blue. We need fusible interfacing and this is the kind of a heavier basic cotton fusible that I have already fused to each one of the pocket pieces that we need to have a little bit more stability. We also need poly strapping and this is one inch strapping. Biani has both one inch and one and a half, but these straps and all the hardware will be for one inch. And it takes five yards of the strapping. So let's talk a little bit about the hardware. We need to have, I selected nickel as my finish for this because I think it goes really, really well with the blue. We'll need rectangle rings and each package comes with two, of course. So we have two here. We'll need wide mouth sliders for adjusting our straps. And then we also need an invisible ma um, magnets that we, they're not invisible. We're going to make them invisible when we sew them into our bag, but they're so in magnets. So we have those and thread. And I basically selected two different threads one is our polyester um, from our uh, serger collection and the other is soft and stable and our soft and stable. It is um, so fine by Superior Thread. <sighs> okay, so that is all you need to kind of pull this project together. And a couple things before we start. I really recommend first stapling all your pages together taking a copy of the very last page, which is all of the labels for each one of the components of your bag, whether it be the pockets, whether it be the quilted fabric, whether it be the mesh or the interfacing or the strapping, whatever it is, cut each piece out, make a copy of this because on the other side are instructions for finishing your bag. So we don't want to, it's not an individual page. So take a copy and um, it'll keep you organized, okay? So read through your pattern, seems obvious, but if you've worked on a Biani pattern before, you'll know each one of the segments. They all are very similar. We start with the basics of prep work. We create handles and um, straps and all the different pocket pieces. We finish everything off as best we can, and then we construct the whole bag pulling it all together. So that is the sequence of the pattern itself. And remember to mark off each section. There's little boxes that you can put a check mark to make sure that you are staying in sequence of your project. It is simple to hear, but it is very good to keep you going. If you can't finish this in one day, um, just make sure you know where you, where you left off. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is wash press your fabric. I did that. I also then made my quilt sandwich with the soft and stable by using our canvas as the main fabric and our cotton, which is the Phoenix uh, Clifton Garden as our lining. Okay, and I did use our long arm machine to quilt up the section that she outlines and with those measurements, okay? One thing to also remember is the measurements for the quilted fabric section, there is definitely enough for putting these measurements on a long arm machine. There's enough extra to hold your fabric in place and still quilt enough 
to cut out each one of the pieces. I really wanted to make sure that I could do that. Um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't need to include more fabric in our kits for you if you do use a long arm to quilt your fabric and I don't need to do that. There is enough to put it on your machine, hold your fabric in place and um, freehand or use a program or design to quilt up your fabric. I used a 16, a size 16 needle on my long arm and um, cotton thread. So the design I used was a simple um, kind of a bubble champagne circles and uh, it's pretty, they're pretty loose. So I think it just gives it the right amount of texture for this particular bag. So I have cut out all of my pieces and keep the labels with them, keep clipping things to them until your bag is completely put together. Um, again, it just keeps everything organized because when you're looking at pieces that look about the same size, you don't want to guess which one is which. I have already started and I have created my binding from the square. Follow the instructions for making your bias binding. It needs to be bias. You're going to go around a lot of curves and it's great to have that little bit of extra movement in the bias binding. I'm going to try something for the first time here, which is I'm using my canvas as my binding. So we'll see how that works and, and hopefully it'll work out just fine. Um, so I have that and once I put together my binding, don't press this in half like you would a traditional binding if you're binding a quilt or something. Um, Annie recommends folding it in half and pinning it every so often to keep it in place. This way you can add a little bit of movement to your binding when you're adding it to a piece of fabric or the lining or the outside edges of your project. And I just fold it up and I put it back in my pattern bag so I remember where I put it. Um, so work on your binding. Also go ahead and make your zipper tabs unless you have really cute um, decorative zipper pulls then use those by all means. Uh, I am going to use our um, lining fabric, which is the Phoenix Clifton Garden as my zipper pull. So I've already made that, cut them into the 10 and a half inch segments and there's four of them. So I'm clipping them together, set them aside for later. I've also <laughs> already created the first piece for our bag, which is the paddle handle, a padded handle, which goes on the top of the bag so that we can hold it without using the straps on the back. So I've already made that. This is a very simple piece to make. You don't have to have instruction on how to make this. Um, it is filled with a piece of soft and stable that is folded in half to give it a little bit of extra padding. So we're done with that one. And I've taken the time to already sew up our straps for the backpack. And this is just a simple process where we take our strap measurement or our strap fabric, fold it right sides together, and then stitch with a quarter inch seam all the way along the full length of the strap. Press the seam open as best you can, and then use your favorite technique for turning this tube right side out. I simply use a gigantic pin. It just always works for me. So if you have another bodkin of some kind or something that you that you use or you stitch to the back of it, um, some extra fabric that you can pull through, whatever your technique is, definitely do that. Once it's folded right side out, press it again with your seam line center back. So basically, unless somebody's looking at the back of your strap, you'll never see the seam. Then we take our one inch strapping that we've already cut to be about, I think these are like 36 and a half inches. And again, use your favorite tool. <laughs> I use a pin to put your strapping right in your tube, okay? 
and keep it flat. Now we've got open ends that we need to tuck inside, press, and then we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around the strapping. That is what it takes to make both straps. Okay, so that's really simple to do. And where we're gonna start today is we also need to make strap tabs that our hardware sits in. And so we're gonna make those next and let's Let's get to it. The strap tabs measure two and three fourths by four and a half inches. And so what we're going to do is fold this in half, right sides together, and then simply stitch a quarter of an inch, sealing this longer edge. and do this for both of our, go this way, both of our strap tabs. And now we're going to use a pin. You could press this as well, press it open. Um, and if you want to, one of the easiest ways to do this is to lay that flat open up that seam, use the back of your by Annie stiletto, and just open up that seam a little bit. We don't always have to run to our iron and ironing board to get a, a good press. So I just put my fingers in here, lay it flat so that the top has the seam, open that up with your fingertips, and then use the stiletto, the, the flat edge, to press this down just a little bit. And then we're gonna take a pin, and I always do this kind of in a quirky way, but we're going to pull this through to the, now use whatever method you like to turn this the other way. We wanna turn to get this right sides out. Sometimes this takes me a while to get started. Um, even this little guy, but this is exactly the same way that we turned the long strap. So we just have to work this to get this the other way around. I've gone and pressed our tab so that the seam is running right down the center of the back and I've already slipped in one of the straps. It's really simple to just slide this in without using any other tool um, because it's just, it's just a small, now you can't do this on that 36 inch long one, but if you just slide that in like that. Next, we're just going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from all sides. Now, I did not turn the ends, the short ends of the um, tabs because it's going to be hidden inside the bag. And um, so we're just top stitching here just to finish it off. Now we need our rectangle rings and we're simply going to take our tab, insert it through the center of our rectangle ring and keep our wrong sides together, just like that. Matching our short end and we're just gonna stitch along the um, the short end here, securing these two together, and just follow your 1 8 inch um, top stitching line to secure it. And I just, I'm going to trim all of this excess 
off before we insert it into the bag once we are at that step. So now we have our two tabs and we're gonna keep our papers with it and on to the next step. I took a minute to grab the sample bag that we have out front and I think it'll help us with all the different pieces and parts that we're putting together right now. We've already created the straps and the handle and set those aside until we need them again. What we're going to do now is we're going to construct this main flap and this flap has a magnet in it and inside this pocket and it goes all the way down to the front of the bag are many little pockets that you can store just about anything in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this magnet, attach it to the lining portion of this flap. We're going to sew them together, the main portion and the lining, and then we're going to finish it off with a little bit of a curve and binding. Now, these magnets, they're really neat. There is a negative side and a positive side and you can see the negative and positive in the very corners, all four corners of the plastic on the magnet. And so separate these and I'm gonna work with the, plot, the positive side here, which is going to go in the flap lining, okay? But before we do that, we have a piece of lining that has already we, I already attached the interfacing to it, and I've already taken the time to measure, following the instructions in the pattern, the guide to where we want to put that magnet, okay? And so all my measurements are in place, and this fits perfectly inside that center square at the bottom, the front bottom of this flap. Now, a very good note that Annie puts in her pattern is to make sure that the bobbin thread matches whatever you're working with because it is visible. So, I mean, we don't always have to be perfect, but you will see that stitch line on the lining. Okay, then what we're going to do after we have that inserted, we're going to take our front flap, align it with our lining, stitch all the way around and that will attach our flap lining to the main portion of the flap. Next, on the back page or the last page of the pattern where we found all the labels, there are template guidelines for these circles, okay? One is a two and a half inch circle and one is the three and a half inch circle cut out using either, you can use this if you'd like, you can find a template that's the same size that you might have in your house, or you can cut this out of template plastic so you always have it, whichever way you wanna do that. Use the three and a half inch circle, which is the larger circle, and what we're going to do, knowing that the bottom here, we need to have that magnet right there, we're going to position the template on top of our main portion of the bag and cut out our curve, okay, on both sides. And once that's done, we're going to take about, I think it is about 16 inches of our binding, cut that off of our binding strip and stitch it onto the curved portion of our top flap. That will complete that top flap for us. I did finish um, all the steps for the front flap. And so here is the flap and it has our curved around edge and the magnet is right down there in the bottom. And I have to tell you, it's a little tricky so one thing to always think about, and I don't, I don't think I said it here, is if your sewing machine has a Teflon um, sewing foot, 
a foot that you can put on your machine, definitely try that because we're dealing with magnets and plastic. And we want to make sure that the foot is moving along nicely when we're stitching that plastic that's around the magnet down to the fabric. Also, I use, <laughs> I just found a piece of cardboard and folded it in half and used this to make sure that you can move that magnet around because it's going to attach itself naturally to the metal um, plate that's on your sewing machine. If you have another trick, definitely use it. But basically, I just use a piece of cardboard to keep the magnet off my plate. Okay, but that was the only other thing that I did to make sure that I could get the the magnet attached to the fabric itself. So I put the binding all the way around and I have um, two different threads. I have a different thread in my bobbin than I do in my needle simply because I'm dealing with two completely different fabrics and I just want to always make sure that my thread matches and it's not the thing that's standing out, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside until we need it later. Next, we're going to work on some pockets. We're gonna prep some pockets. And in this backpack, there are, I'm gonna bring this forward a little bit so that you can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Inside here are several pockets for credit cards, um, room keys if you're traveling, uh, anything small that you wanna keep inside easily accessible without having to go inside your backpack. And so we need to prepare these fabrics and it's a very simple process. We have a pocket A, B, C, and D. And I have everything marked and so we're going to take an iron and an ironing board and press, I'm going to just separate these here, pocket A. And again, I've already fused the interfacing to the back to give it a little bit more stability. And I have to tell you right now, I don't think I would have needed the interfacing for the canvas. This is canvas. Now, the pocket B because every other one is a different color, which is great because then you can see where the slot starts in your pockets. This one does need interfacing. And so we wanna make sure that we interface our traditional sew batik cotton. Um, but I don't think we would need the interfacing on the canvas. Your choice, I have it because I really wanted to make this bag completely as designed I'm just simply using canvas. So we're going to take our iron and our ironing board. We're going to press each one of these right side out. And again, your interfacing is going to be your guide, but we're simply going to press this and then we're going to top stitch along the folded edge of every single one of these pockets. So pocket A, we'll do the same thing for pocket folded in half, pocket B, and pocket C, and pocket D is the, the long pocket in the front that these are all attached to. So we're gonna do the pressing, top stitching, and I'll be right back. Our next pocket, well, actually, let me go back. The pocket inserts for all of the front credit card pockets are ready to go. And so I'm just adding all the things that are ready to our stack here in front. And next we're going to add, we're gonna finish the front pocket here that gets attached to the front of the bag. So what we need to do, this is the other half of our magnet. And so much like we did on the flap, we need to measure following the instructions in the pattern. We need to measure in and down and create our square as to where to put the negative side of our magnet. 
that will go right in that square and make sure that your um, empty magnet side that needs to connect to the flap is facing up. So it's opposite of what you did before. So this is going to go right on top of our quilted pocket. And we've also marked another line right below the magnet. We're going to line up our lining, which is the facing to this magnet, because we don't want to see the magnet. We just want to make it look like it's one continuous piece of fabric. So we're going to take off our little papers. We're going to line up right sides together between the facing and our quilted fabric. Line that up. I'm going to put a, a clip here and a clip over on this side and we're going to stitch a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across here. Once that's done, we will then flip this up, covering the magnet, press it down, and we'll have this portion finished. Once that is all done, we need to create, or we need to add, our binding to the top of this opening, the pocket opening. And so we'll take our binding for here and do just like we did before. We're going to fold, we're gonna stitch this to the back, bring it around to the front and top stitch. I finished pocket E. So here's the front and then here is the flap and it sticks right to it and it is dead center. So I am very happy with this. So this will become our front flap of the bag. So we're going to front pocket with flap. Okay, we're going to set that aside. Next, we're going to turn the bag around and we're going to assemble everything for this zipper pocket right here. And there are no extra pockets or um, anything inside here. It's just a very, very deep pocket. So here we go. And this is um, pocket F. Now I'm going to turn this around so you can kind of see what we need to do. I have it facing me, but I'm going to turn it around. So we have, we have the bottom of that pocket, which is quilted. So we're working with quilted fabric here. And make sure you put this on the um, 12 and a half by 11, okay? And we're also going to need our zipper. That will be on top of this pocket. We're gonna finish that off with another piece of quilted fabric, which is like the pocket facing up here. And then we have binding. So we're going to bind the top edge of this little piece here. Okay. So that facing, so we're going to take and assemble each one of these, just sewing them to each other. So we end up with one continuous pocket that's going to be attached to the external piece of the backpack. Okay. So I'm gonna jump over to the sewing machine and sew all these together. I'd like to get a little bit more specific about the zipper itself and how that's attached. What I just did is I just attached the bottom main portion of this pocket to the zipper. And the next thing we need to do is attach this facing to the upper portion of the zipper. And let me show you what this looks like finished on the back side. It has a little thread. It is simply the seam that we sewed first, and then we folded and pressed the zipper flat onto the back of this pocket. And then on this side, I just simply stitched, edge stitched right along that the end of the zipper just to encase you can see in here that it's folded down pretty intensely. Um, but what we want to do is make a really finished, a really nice finished edge. And um, so let's do that for the top portion of the zipper. So basically we take our zipper, 
uh, or our facing, and we're going to line it up here along this edge of the pocket and that edge so that they are all lined up, okay? And then we're going to stitch a quarter inch, and it's slightly bigger, actually, than a quarter inch um, because we have a lot of bulk that we need to hide back inside our seam line. Okay. And I still have the zipper um, pull outside of this area here, which makes it a lot easier to stitch. I didn't use pins or anything. I am just simply guiding this along. always back stitch okay next what we're going to do is I'm gonna go see what we want to do is we're gonna end up pressing this back but we want to make sure that the zipper itself is flat so we have to really press with I'll get rid of these um, threads here, but we want to press with our iron because that is really the only way to get steam in here to get it pressed. And then we're going to stitch along this edge right here. I'll be right back. So I gave it a really, really good press. And so now we're just going to go back under, under our sewing machine here and just ever so delicately position your needle down and then just just slowly follow the edge. I used to try to do this on the front to do a top stitch and um, that's pretty silly because you really can't see where the, the edge of the zipper ends. And then I do use this stiletto to just guide this along because we're, we're trying to hide all of that soft and stable, the lining fabric, and the main fabric. So, and we'll clean up our threads in a little bit. But do you see how this is simply, it's all completely flat? looks great and then the front we have our zipper and it's top stitched evenly on both sides next we put our binding I am gonna press this binding in half and then we'll stitch it to the back and pull it around to the front of this pocket here is pocket F and it is all ready to be attached to the external bag portion, which we'll do in a little bit. But we're adding to our stack of finished projects. Okay, next, pocket G. And G is an optional pocket for you, which is, do you wanna use mesh or one of the, either the lining or the coordinate fabric? Um, to make your inside zipper pocket. So inside here, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to reach so that hopefully you can. Um, let me fold this down. But inside is a mesh pocket that has a very small piece of mesh up top and the zipper here with mesh going all the way to the bottom of the backpack, okay? And again, this can be coordinating fabric as well. It doesn't have to be the mesh. I just 
like having an option where you can see what's in the inside of your backpack. So if this, I have to measure, but this may be perfect for my um, laptop to fit right in that mesh bag and zip it up and then it isn't brushing up against anything else in the bag. So just the assembly of this particular um, portion is very similar to what we just did for F. We're going to take the mesh, the most, the largest piece of mesh, we're going to stitch to the bottom of our zipper and then add the little top portion of the mesh to the top of the zipper. And this one does not have, I just want to make sure I'm saying this correctly, right, there isn't another binding along the top of the mesh. It's going to be stitched inside um, the bag when the top of the bag is attached to the front of the bag. So let me lay this out here. Here is the largest piece. And again, the colors I selected are parrot blue. And the zipper, I'll put the zipper pull on it right there. And then the top portion will go up here. Now, I did a little bit of a detailed zipper um, instruction so that you could see exactly how that's attached to keep the back of the zipper perfectly flat and all the little edges inside that zipper. It's the same technique that you use when you're adding mesh to the zipper as well. Just be careful not to stretch or pull because this is definitely it's got a little bit of movement to it. So that's the only thing that I would caution is just really use pins or use clips to make sure that that doesn't move as you stitch it to the zipper. We have two more little pocket preps. These are simple and they're G and H. I think No, H and I, this was G. Um, boy, there's a lot of pockets when you get to I. So these are two pockets that will be become pockets when we assemble the side of the bag. So there are pockets here for a water bottle. If you're using this for um, baby stuff, you can put a baby bottle in here. You can do anything. So there's pockets on both sides, a big coffee mug perhaps. That would be my thing. Um, so we're going to simply bind the top edge of both of these side pockets and they'll be ready to use in the next step, I believe, when we start um, preparing the zipper side strip. And this will, the side strip will be going all the way from bottom to top. That'll include the pocket, it'll include the zipper, and then we really get to assembling this bag. So I'm just gonna quickly add the binding to the tops of these two pockets and come back and we're gonna start the assembly. That we'll do in a little bit more detail. Okay, now we get to start assembling this bag. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the side pockets to this side panel which goes across the bottom and up the other side. So here we have that panel and I've already done the markings because we need to be able to position our pockets. Let me grab these two pockets. We need to be able to position them just like that. However, we have to do a little work ahead of time. Okay, so we're going to follow the instructions for the measurements, but we're going to mark our lines so we know the width of the bottom of the backpack, as well as where we're going to stitch our pockets onto. But this has a very interesting shape. So we're wider at the bottom than we are at the top. So we have to do a little bit of cutting. And so we've measured down a half an inch from each of the four corners. Then I've um, marked from our bottom line here to that half inch mark. I've already stitched, I'm top stitched 
to the inside of that marking so that we have a sealed edge. Now, what I'm going to do is cut. Let me grab, where did my ruler go? Right here. We're gonna trim those off right to the outside of that stitch line. And this is going to be our angle. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna turn this around. Do the same thing on all four sides. Actually, I'm gonna turn this. I am a right-handed, so I need to be able to see everything from that side. Okay, there's our fourth, and I'm gonna clip off some of those threads. So now we have this very interesting shape, which is going to become the sides of the bag. With our markings here, we're going to take our pockets, this is H and I, and position them to the outside, so to the bottom of the bag, right along that marking, okay? And clip that in place. Same with the other pocket. I'm gonna lay this right sides together. And I don't see any clips, so I'm just gonna pin this in place. And I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a couple of things. And I'll just walk you through what we're going to do because it's really simple and self-explanatory. I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch securing the pocket to the side panel. We're going to turn, once that's done, press it so that we're actually sealing that seam. Then we're going to Take the pocket, turn it this way, right side out, and press it again. Now, we have this pocket, if you can see, that is wider than our base. So, that's intentional, because we need to have room to put a water bottle or a coffee uh, mug or something in the side of the bag. So, what we're going to do then is align the side of our pocket to the shape of the base. Stitch an eighth of an inch to secure it. Then we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch along the bottom just to seal that seam. And then again, slide this up and we're gonna stitch an eighth of an inch along the opposite side, leaving the center open. So we'll naturally get a little bit of a gap between the pocket and the side panel. We're gonna do that for both pockets and move on to the next step. We're getting there. After stitching the pockets to the bottom and the sides of the bag, see how they kind of pucker out just a little bit like that? Um, it's great. This is just such a neat design. So that will be the bottom of our bag. And I'm just gonna set that aside for just a second um, because the next step is to create the top portion of the sides and the top. So we're, we're going to add the zipper to the two sides, creating our zipper strip for the top. I went ahead and did that because it's the exact same steps for adding a zipper to the quilted fabric as we did earlier with the pocket. And so I have everything stitched and top stitched down. Now, the one thing with this bag, again, is that it is not square, it's not straight. It has an angle and a taper to it. So we want to adjust, even though we've cut our um, zipper strips to, and sewn them together, do you see the markings? On here, I've already gone ahead <laughs> and added the markings and top stitched one eighth of an inch on the inside of the top stitching because we need to taper 
this zipper strip from the corners in gets narrower and that will form this top. So this piece here, which is our bottom and our sides, once I get this cut, is going to be joined to our pocket sides here, okay? And then we'll get to working on the front and back. But for now, we have to cut away our angles. So I'm gonna take a ruler, you could, use a scissor too because I've already stitched like I mentioned inside my cut line so that I don't have any raw edges for the next step. So I'm positioning my ruler on the eighth inch mark. That's where the stitch line is. And I'm going to cut this fabric away up to that point. And it has a little bit of an angle, so be careful not to cut off any of the stitching. Okay, so you'll see that, you see the shape there? It's very different. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side. and clean up any of our threads. Okay. There we go. Turn it. And now the long finished edge. Okay, there we go. So now we have a shape of the top that has quite an angle to it. And just with the angle, I'm not giving measurements, so just follow the pattern with each one of the measurements and um, we'll get the same shape. But make sure when you're doing this particular step that you pull your zipper tabs into the middle because we want to seal off all the way around and uh, we need those zipper tabs inside. I have done that the wrong way and it doesn't make you very happy. Let's position these right sides together, matching, I'm gonna set this aside, matching our short ends, okay? Now, I think first I'm gonna remove the rest of my zipper strip here, or zipper. Just making that even. And we're going to match our sides. And I'm going to clip those. On both sides. I went ahead and stitched the zipper strip to the side and that was a quarter inch seam allowance. Then we have two binding strips because what we're going to do is seal that seam so that nobody sees it and it's beautifully done. So what I've done is folded the binding strip in half just like any other binding and stitched 3 eighths of an inch away from the cut edge. And in, this gets a little bulky right in this area. And a great way, besides using a hammer, <laughs> the great way to really get this to be thin and flat is to stitch two more stitch lines within that 3 eighths inch seam. So stitch a quarter of an inch and stitch an eighth of an inch. And it really flattens out the two layers of soft and stable, the zipper, and the main fabric, and the lining on both of these sides. And so it really does flatten it out. And so I've done that on both of these edges. So now what we wanna do is we're going to take our binding, now think of it as being flat and open, and we're going to cover, we're not gonna make 
a traditional binding where it's open and standing up, we're gonna flatten this out because this is the side of the inside of the bag. And so we're going to simply flatten it away from the zipper strip and stitch along this fold line, attaching it to the side of the bag. It's time to create and assemble the backpack front and back pieces. You need your favorite fabric pencil, or I'm just using Taylor's chalk, and follow the measurements in the pattern to mark each one of the placement pieces that are needed on the front fabric, okay? So we need a place to put our center flap, and that will be positioned with the straight edge against that line marking, centering it, and then it also is exactly flush with the top of the front piece. We're gonna stitch that down, and then we're gonna cover that stitch line with a facing. So this will cover this up. <laughs> we wanna never show any of those open edges. And once that's done, we all come back <laughs> and we're going to use our other three line markings to position our pocket pieces. Pocket A, we'll stitch that down using an eighth of an inch seam. We'll layer on pocket B following that next line. And then pocket C is also really a finishing pocket. So we're going to take this pocket and we're gonna line it up the other way, facing the other, the bottom of the front piece, stitch along there with our quarter inch seam, and then we're gonna flip that up. So basically sealing off that bottom edge so we don't see any seam lines anywhere in the front of the bag. And then we'll come back and attach the front piece, which covers all of this up and ends up looking so beautifully just like this, okay? So I'm gonna run over to the sewing machine, put all these pieces on and come back and we'll continue the process. Here's what the front looks like now <laughs> that I've attached the flap, the flap facing and the three pockets. Our next step is to create the credit card or card slots by stitching following the marked lines that are indicated in the pattern. So I'm gonna go back and do that and then line up our cover. I call it a cover simply because it's like a pocket cover. And we're gonna line up the bottom of the bag with this cover and stitch all the way around sides, bottom and top. And we will have the front to our pocket and if we flip this flap down, <laughs> you'll hear it snap with the magnet that is inside the top cover. Okay, so we're getting there. We're now making that and finishing the front of our backpack. Here's what the front of our backpack now looks like. We have the flap and all of the pockets inside and on the back, there was one more step that we needed to do after we finished adding the top portion of the pocket here. On the back or the lining side of this piece, we needed to add our pocket G, which is either the mesh with the zipper, or you could have had the option of coordinating fabric with the zipper as well. And I chose the mesh. And so you line up the mesh so that the zipper is like an inch and a half down from the top. And the mesh portion that we created for, for G was wider and taller and longer than the actual piece. And so position that here, stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around and cut off all the extra mesh. And that is how it looks from the inside of the front of our backpack, okay? So we're gonna set this aside. So now we have, we're just, we're running out of pieces here to put together. 
So now let's work on the back of the backpack. The first thing we're going to do is add an inside pocket to the back, and this is a larger, deeper pocket. So follow the measurements and mark your four inch line. And this is pocket, I believe it's H. <laughs> and we're going to position this pocket slightly below that four inch marked line, stitch a quarter of an inch and then press and then fold this back up and press again. Now we need to mark our divider lines for this pocket and think about how you want to use the inside of your backpack. Um, the instructions are simply to divide it equally left and right. So you can follow those instructions or do whatever you think you will use this pocket for. Um, so once you've decided, mark your lines, your divider lines, stitch an eighth of an inch down the side, an eighth of an inch over to your first divider line, and then go up to the top, turn it around and go down to the bottom and continue across to finish stitching this pocket in place an eighth of an inch away from the edges and up and down your divider lines. That'll be the last thing you need to do for the inside, your lining side of the back of the backpack. Now let's flip this over. Now we get to work on the straps, the padded handle, and finishing it off with our last pocket, which will cover up the back of our bag. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is mark our positioning for the handles and follow those instructions in the pattern. And we're gonna take our padded handle and position it right along those markings. And I just simply use clips to keep this in place. It's really hard, or I find it hard and difficult to put a pin through the multiple layers of soft and stable and the, the padding that's on this padded handle. So I just use clips here, and you can do these one at a time as well, to clip the top of the handle in place. Next, we take our straps. There's two long straps, and we're gonna line these up next to the padded handle, okay? And I'm just gonna clip that in place right there. This one over here. And one thing to really, really, so we're, we're building the top of our straps, okay? And the one thing to really make sure you do here is stitching, follow the instructions to stitch down and across and create an X on the bottom of each one of these strap ends, okay? Because there's nothing worse than having, you know, don't just stitch across because we wanna make sure that these are secure. You're gonna be lifting them. You're gonna be putting them on and off the back or your shoulder or carrying them. So we wanna make sure that these are very sturdy. So use as much of your stitching as you want to, to create like a half inch X box that you've gone through to make sure that these each one of these ends are really in place, okay? Once that's done, we get to add the final pocket to the top of this bag. Move your zipper inside. We're going to stitch down and around and up to enclose this pocket. And on this particular one, we wanna go all the way across the top as well because our pocket starts and stops here with the zipper, it's not up here, you see? We're going to seal off and really secure our straps and the padded handle. Once that's done, we'll come back and 
we'll grab our two strap tabs. These are the ones that have the rectangles on them. And we're going to add them to the bottom of this bag. Okay. We are down to three pieces left. It's amazing how we start with so many different pieces and parts to a bag like this and end up with the back with its pocket inside, the front with all the pockets inside of our flap and our mesh inside lining, the side portions and the top of this bag all ready to start assembling. And um, we're almost there. So, oh, and then there's the ties for our zippers. So let's move along here because the one thing we have to do before we can sew all this together and bind our edges is we need to prepare the front and the back to have this shape. The shape is narrower at the top than it is at the bottom, and there are round edges on all four corners. So we're going to take follow the instructions with all the measurements, but what we have to do is measure in from the top on both sides, Use our template, the circle template, for measuring our corners on the top and the bottom. And this is for the front and the back pieces. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch inside this line an eighth of an inch, sealing off my corners all the way around. And it really squishes down the soft and stable as well. So I'm gonna go and do that, and then we're gonna cut along our drawn lines, okay? Once we're done with that, we'll come back and we'll start putting this bag together. We're sitting here at my sewing machine and I decided to turn on the video camera. I um, already have attached the back portion of the backpack to the sides simply by placing right sides together and following all the way around. It's so much easier to stitch these two together, your back, which is flat, and the sides by placing your um, the flat side of the back, <laughs> if this is all making sense, on your sewing machine table. And then we can move and manipulate the side of this bag easier as we're going around and stitching. So I have done this already and um, it looks like we're taking shape here, okay? And now before I put the front of the backpack on, I it's really, really a good practice to... Um, add your binding first. And that is the step that Annie has in her project. So we're gonna start here about an inch in from the bottom left corner of our bag with the flat side of our bag again against the table and about four inches extra here on our binding. And I am using our canvas as the binding I did a little test and I actually like how the binding goes on. And so um, I'm gonna stick with it and we're just gonna use our canvas as the binding. It's gonna give it a really good amount of stability. So I have this set to um, a pretty tiny stitch and we're just going to stitch this on with a scant quarter inch and we'll be able to then pull it around to the other side to do the binding. And I want to show you something too. Hopefully you can see this, the thickness of what we're going to be going through. And this is the thinnest portion. So my sewing machine does chug along a little bit, but um, it's, it's doing really well with all of these layers. So I'm going to just start sewing here about an inch in so that we have plenty of space at the bottom of this bag to connect our bindings front and end. Okay. And I have my Annie's um, stiletto ready to go when we start going around these curves.
and I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. I just want you to see what it's like to add binding to a portion of this bag. And it is really good to show you going around a corner so that you can see how to use this um, if you aren't familiar with some of Annie's tutorials. because um, And definitely use those tutorials and those videos because they come, there's a little code that comes in each pattern that will show you how to use the stiletto and how to do the binding here. So we're going through a really thick area. And just keep moving your bag around and turning the batting or the batting, the binding at the same time and stay as, as, as close as you can to and in that seam line that you just put in there. I finished adding the binding and what I ended up doing actually over here is I didn't have enough space. I didn't allow myself enough space to do a proper diagonal join of my binding strips. So I just did a simple straight stitch and it worked out just fine. I've gone ahead and pulled the binding back around to the inside of the bag and clipped it all the way around. It's good to do this just to kind of make sure everything is going to cover when you go around the inside of this bag, okay? So I've already taken a moment to do that. If you have to adjust anything or if you have to remove, like, like you took too big of a stitch or you have to go and fix your stitches or remove a little bit of excess uh, contents that's inside your binding, now's the time to do that, okay? So, but I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks. And you have two options here. You can put this back under your needle and stitch really close to the fold of the binding. And you'll secure this and catch the back as well. Or hand bind it. Um, I have made many by Annie bags and other projects that require binding of an open seam. And I just simply take and hand bind it. This, however, is a backpack. And so I think I'm going to make my journey back under the needle and <laughs> make sure that I can stitch this because I really want it to be secure if I'm going to be um, putting a laptop in and out, papers in and out, and whatever it happens to be that I'm going to carry in the backpack. So I really want this one to be secure. So I'm going to put this one right back on my sewing machine and finish off the binding. When I'm done with that, I'm not going to take you through the process again, but the next thing we do is with right sides together, we are going to add the top 
or the front of our backpack to our center side seam here. And we just follow the same exact steps. We're gonna clip it and we're gonna flip this over keeping the flat surface of our bag on our sewing machine table and stitch all the way around and then add our binding like we just did on this side. So I'm not gonna take you through that process again. And once you're done with that, we just turn this inside out and we simply have to add our wide mouth sliders to our straps and we can start using this backpack. So. I'm gonna take the time to go through this and finish this up, and then we'll be back after I've turned this right side out. In the last step, we were stitching the back and the front to the center strip with the pocket and the zipper going across the top, and finished the binding. Um, all the way around inside the bag and then I turned this right side out and smoothed out all of the edges and it's really a fun backpack I have to say but we're not done there are two steps left one for which I have started is to add our hardware to the straps on the back to create that backpack strap I finished one so that you can see how it's hooked together. And here's the other, the right strap. And there's a couple of steps that really make this a lot easier. Um, but I am gonna tell you, since our straps are made from the canvas, they are a little bit thicker um, when you're going through the hardware. So, um, not too much, but they are a little bit thicker and they're a little snug. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, we will need to, once we get everything wrapped through, we're going to fold this edge under, this end, and stitch to secure it and make an X through the center just to give it a little bit of additional reinforcement. But before we start putting everything through the hardware, it's really a good practice to mark where you want to stop, fold, and then stitch. So let's take our ruler and whatever marking pencil you're using, and on the inside, measure down about two and a half inches and place kind of a mark so that you know that that's where your hardware should stop, then we're going to fold it over and stitch. The other little mark I make, and again, make sure that it's, you can get rid of your um, fabric pencil marking as well, but I like to measure, to give myself a really good square and an X, I really like to take a moment to measure an inch up from the bottom stitch line, because remember, our straps, we stitched an eighth of an inch all the way around, so an inch up from that stitch line, and make a little mark on here to know where you want to stop stitching when you create your square with an X. It just makes it so much easier than to try to guess, and it makes both straps really look professionally done and consistent. So I've made those markings. Next, the first thing we need to do, hopefully you can see this, but the hardware itself for the wide mouth slider has a curve. Let me see if you can use, it has like a little curve to it. That's the top side of the slider. We want to take our end and make sure it is straight with the seam down, go up through the first slot, go down through the second, okay? And just let's pull this up to the center of the strap actually, because you need a little space around your sewing machine when you finish this stitching to secure the strap to the hardware. So we want to pull this down, but not all the way because we have another step. Next, we hook our strap through the end from the top side of the bag down through, okay, and 
Now, let's pull that through a little bit. Now we want to take this strap and go back up through the first slot. Let's call 1A and 1B, which is how Annie references them in her pattern. Go back up through A, because remember, we want to put the seam side of our strap together to close it. And then back down through B. This is why it's important to leave some space here. And I flip it over to make sure where my put my line. There it is. I'm going to stop right there. Pull that together. And I think all my clips are over there, but I'm going to just pin this in place. And believe me, it's not going to move even if you just let this go. But I'm just going to put a pin through here so that it doesn't move at the end. And then we can pull, I'm gonna pull it from the bottom here, but this little loop here can go down now. Make that flat. And now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I do, I'm not actually gonna take you over there, but what I wanna tell you what I do is I like keeping my stitches right on the lines that were there before and not create additional stitch lines. So what I do is I take and on the back side here, I stitch right along that seam that's already there, the stitch line that's already there. Just secure it, go over and back. Then I turn this over, put it back underneath my needle and simply stitch up to my one inch mark, across, down, make my X, back stitch, and I'm done. So that is all we need to do to finish off our strap, okay? And our straps are done and everything looks all lined up. It's great. These are, that was really easy to put on. The last step is our zipper pulls. And I, we made these way up in step number one. And um, so I used our lining fabric as my coordinate just to add a little bit more flair to the outside of the bag. And if you have a decorative pull, definitely use those, clip those on or, or whatever you'd like to use. But I simply fold mine in half and put it through the hole of the, of the zipper pull and just tie a knot. That is simply what I do. And then I add a second little knot down below and cut off the ends. So I'm going to do that for the other two as well. The inside of the bag, I already, I already have added that. And then we'll go through this bag. Simple way to do this. You know, I had to find some really fun decorative um, zipper pulls because I think it would be great to, to add a little... I don't know, a little splash with some sewing machine or a little happy face or something on it that can add to your design of your bag or customize it too. If you're making something for a friend, what do they enjoy? Okay, let me move this over one more. And I'm really thrilled with how this backpack turned out. And I love the color, which is, um, the Delft color and it's Medora Flora is the motif of our canvas. And I did use as the coordinate another canvas and that is the coordinate itself, which is the hand dyed Delft. And I think the straps are gonna be so much stronger. And so those, the binding, and remember we can do binding with canvas, but I'll give you a suggestion on that. In the pattern, at the beginning when we make our binding, um, we're cutting strips that are two and a quarter inches. That's the recommendation, or it can be two and a half inches. There is one section right up here. I would say this, um, and I might actually put this in our kit instructions when we put together a kit, 
but I'm gonna measure the amount of binding that really needs to be here. I think it's like 16 inches or so if I can remember. That needs to be two inches wide, your bias binding, because you do have a curve and it's a single layer of soft and stable with your fabric and it's quilted. So we just need a narrow piece of binding really. So I would just cut whatever that measurement is out of our binding when we're cutting our binding strips and then cut two and a half when you're working with the canvas. We need that little extra, extra bit of fabric to go around the, thick, the thickest sides of this bag. And so that would be the other recommendation when you're working with the canvas. Now, I really wanted to test um, being able to use the coordinate as a canvas. Now, a lot of you may want simply the main bag, bag fabric to be canvas with a coordinating cotton for both the lining and the um, coordinate fabric, which is fine too. That's perfectly fine, very sturdy, very beautiful, that, that's fine. I just wanna be able to use the canvas to give it that little extra stability and just know that you can, okay? But you are working with a little bit more fabric in each one of the areas that um, add volume, okay? And the one, the one area to me, I'm gonna move this out of the way that we're done now, that is the thickest on this bag is, you see where this layer, there's this, um, when we covered up the end of our seam here inside, that is really thick. And then matching that up with the side of this bag, because we also have pockets in here. So it gets really, really, really thick. I would say the height of that thickness is about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna try some various techniques to try to smash that down. I know that Annie recommends just use a hammer. Um, just squash it, squish it however you can to make it a little bit easier to work with under your sewing machine needle. And it worked fine. So the binding is great all the way around. I have my mesh zipper pocket on the inside here and it goes all the way to the bottom. The other side is two pockets with one divider, make them any size you want. And that does not go all the way down, it goes a part way down. Um, and then the whole open openness of your backpack, okay? The outside, we have our two outside pockets and my little coffee here goes right in there. Perfect. The back side of the bag, again, our straps and a zipper pocket that goes all the way to the bottom. And the front, our flap with a magnet and all of the pockets for credit cards, keys, whatever you need to keep right up top. And that, of course, goes all the way to the bottom as well. So here is, I'm gonna get that out of here, but here is our backpack with a handle and straps. And just so you can kind of get the size, if I put this on, here we go. Isn't that the cutest bag? Perfect for whatever you want to carry in your backpack. So there you have it. Leave us some questions, comment below, um, add any hints or, or tricks that you've used when you've made this bag. And I think I have all of my little slips back into my pattern. Got your back 2.0 and, or 2.1 I guess it is. And I will soon be sharing images of the pink version of the back at you, which is just the smaller version of this backpack. So thanks for sticking with us this long and make yourself a Got Your Back backpack.